Hi there. In this video, I'll be answering part of a question about fission reactions, calculating the energy released during the reaction, and learning about mass numbers and atomic numbers. Here's part of a question from the 2009 Old Hire paper. Some power stations use nuclear fission reactions to provide energy for generating electricity. The following statement represents a fission reaction. We then see a description of the fission reaction. Before the reaction, we have a uranium-235 nucleus and a neutron. This tells us that it must be an induced fission reaction, where the uranium-235 nucleus is bombarded by a neutron. As a result, the large nucleus splits into two smaller nuclei, a lanthanum-139 nucleus, a molybdenum nucleus, as well as two neutrons and a certain number of electrons. We're then asked to determine the numbers represented by the letters R and S in the above statement. To calculate R, we need to know that the total of the mass numbers before the reaction is equal to the total of the mass numbers after the reaction. This is the mass number of the uranium nucleus, 235. This tells us the number of protons plus neutrons in the nucleus. Before the reaction then, the total of the mass numbers is 235 plus 1. After the reaction, the total of the mass numbers is 139 for lanthanum, plus R, what we're trying to find, the mass number of molybdenum, plus 2, since we have two neutrons. The electrons have a mass number of 0. We can simplify this slightly by adding the numbers on the left-hand side, and then on the right-hand side. To make R the subject of the equation, we subtract 141 from both sides, like so. R then is 236 minus 141, which is 95. To calculate S, we use a similar method, remembering that the total of the atomic numbers before the reaction is equal to the total of the atomic numbers after the reaction. Uranium has an atomic number of 92, which tells us that a uranium nuclei contains 92 protons. Before the reaction, the total of the atomic numbers is 92. After the reaction, the total of the atomic numbers is 57 for lanthanum, plus 42 for molybdenum, plus S times negative 1. First, we'll add the two numbers in the right-hand side. We'll then subtract 99 from both sides like so, giving us S times negative 1 is equal to 92 minus 99, which works out to be negative 7. Finally, dividing both sides by negative 1, we get S is equal to negative 7 divided by negative 1, equals 7. As I said earlier, the mass number tells us the number of protons plus neutrons in the nucleus. An atomic number tells us the number of protons in the nucleus. We can therefore subtract the atomic number from the mass number in order to calculate the number of neutrons alone in the nucleus. Isotopes of any given element always have the same atomic number, but different mass number. As an example, a uranium-238 nucleus would contain three more neutrons than a uranium-235 nucleus. Their mass numbers are different, but they would both have an atomic number of 92. Let's look at the second part of the question. Part 2 asks us to explain why a nuclear fission reaction releases energy. Here's the fission reaction we saw earlier. On the left-hand side, before the reaction, we have what are known as the reactants, and on the right-hand side, after the reaction, we have the products. We would give an identical answer if we were asked why a nuclear fusion reaction releases energy. The reason is that the total mass of the products after the reaction is less than the total mass of the reactants before the reaction. It was Einstein who proposed that mass and energy are equivalent, and that this loss in mass is converted to energy according to the equation E equals mc squared. We'll be using this equation in the next part of the question. Here it is. Part 3 says... The masses of the particles involved in the reaction are shown in the table. We're then asked to calculate the energy released in this reaction. We'll need more space to calculate the answer, so the first thing I'll do is delete the last entry in the table, since it says that the mass of the electron is negligible. Electrons do have a mass, although it's so small that it won't affect our answer to this question, so it can be ignored. We'll get more space too if we split the table like this. Let's remind ourselves of the fission reaction again. Using the masses given in the table then, the mass before the reaction is equal to the mass of the uranium nucleus plus the mass of the neutron. This gives us a value of 3.91848 times 10 to the negative 25 kilograms. The mass after the reaction is equal to the mass of the lanthanum nucleus 
plus the mass of the molybdenum nucleus, plus the mass of two neutrons, giving us a total of 3.91478 times 10 to the negative 25 kilograms. It's important not to round these values since we're trying to find the difference between them, which is so small. So the difference in mass is equal to the total mass before the reaction minus the total mass after the reaction, which is 3.7 times 10 to the negative 28 kilograms. The final step is to substitute this loss in mass into the equation E equals mc squared to find the energy released. C is the speed of light in a vacuum. You'll find that in the data sheet at the front of the paper. That gives us 3.7 times 10 to the negative 28 times 3 times 10 to the power of 8 squared, which gives us an answer of 3.33 times 10 to the negative 11 joules. I strongly suggest that, if you've not done so already, you attempt this question for yourself, as well as the past paper question in Fusion. You'll see there's a link to it now at the top right of your screen. And I'm afraid that's the end of yet another video. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.